welcome back a new video about luck in coffee today um, even though I said in my last video which was about um, short sellers and the big money involved in the whole crumpling down of luck in coffee um, that I want to do a new video once I get new verifiable numbers and an update an official update by luck in coffee well now I felt it's time to make another update because during this week so many new things happened and even though I was planning to make a new video on Tesla China and also NEO, which I will both still do. I thought, well, let's make another update about luck and coffee and here we go. So the topics that I talk through in this video will be about why luck and coffee is suspended, what's going on, what could it mean. Um, and I also want to go into the bigger picture of the context around luck and coffee and actually speak about the role of Alibaba and Tencent and what this could all mean about what's currently happening in the market and with luck and coffee's stock. And I want to just share a couple of things that I found out during researching luck and coffee. Um, so these are some details that you possibly as an investor in and coffee or if you're thinking about still is it a good time to buy the stocks or so on uh, want to possibly know and in the end of the video I will talk about a possible merger or um, buyout um, possibility for luck and coffee stock so if you're interested in learning more about this please watch the video till the very end and also make sure to give it a thumbs up a like this really helps us to grow the channel and it's very helpful for the YouTube algorithm so thank you very much for your support and if you are revisiting our channel guys thank you so much for more than 3,000 subscribers in a very short amount of time uh, we really appreciate that because we put a lot of efforts besides our day jobs into this YouTube channel and if you're new to the channel thank you so much for stopping by and um, this channel is all about tech from China investment in some Chinese stocks and about our daily jobs about consulting businesses going to China or want to innovate with China so this this is what this channel is all about and thank you guys for subscribing and hitting the bell button in order to get a notification whenever we post a new video. So as you can see we finally made it back from Mallorca, Spain to Germany and I'm back in my little home office and I'm still having my red nose. That's not from drinking too much in current time because well that might be possible but um, now it's rather still from the sun in Spain and um, well we, we had a good travel back home uh, even though this whole Rona situation is still going on and now have more time once again on focusing on the Chinese stocks and that we are invested in and doing some remote online courses and building our YouTube channel here. That being said, if we talk on this channel about some stocks, this is not financial advice. It's only sharing our personal history of investing some of the tech companies that we're seeing in China. And um, well, this is not any advice if you should buy, hold or sell any equities that we're mentioning here in this channel. However, we are very transparent in terms of what kind of companies that we're buying. We're actually putting the money where our mouth is. And you may have seen in my previous videos that I'm holding a couple of shares of Luck in Coffee stock. And that's also why I'm following the news quite closely. And currently it's not possible to trade Luck and Coffee stock. Um, Luck and Coffee has been on a hold and by the New York um, Stock Exchange. And there's been a couple of rumors about why is this happening currently. So I want to give you my views on that. So first of all, after Luck and Coffee was going down 80% uh, in one day after the fraud was becoming public, um, I think most of the people were um, trying to sell their stock as fast as possible. But then afterwards, obviously, uh, there are some people stuck like I am with our shares being down 80% and now thinking about what could possibly happen to the company. So either we get maybe a delisting of the company, um, Luck and Coffee could go bankrupt or Luck and Coffee could somehow uh, come throughout this situation. No matter if you're long or short Luck and Coffee, you may have possibly been surprised by the trade halts that have been enforced. And um, to go a little bit deeper into that, so in the first beginning we had a T1 hold by the Nasdaq and that means usually that there is some news pending, news that is material to the stock. That means that this kind of news is not something you know that just media reports about, but that's actually something that you usually have a official filing for and that will have implications on the share price. I've been witnessing a couple of um, held trades uh, before, for instance NEO stock was also on hold for quite some while uh, because there have been speculations around the stock and so on and usually trading uh, resumes once the news is out and um, th but this didn't happen in this case. Luck and Coffee is still on a hold 
um, and also it uh, changed uh, the, the status of the why the hold is being um, enforced from a T1 to a T12 hold. And a T12 hold means that Nasdaq is requesting additional information. So there have been a couple of people commenting online that well the hold is because the SEC is going and well will delist uh, Luck and Coffee and there will never be a trade resuming and actually also saying that well in the past that if we've seen such kind of a holding of the trades um, usually that meant very meant really negative um, uh, information or news for the stock. My personal opinion is that I don't think that um, Luck and Coffee will be suspended and delisted right now. Um, actually, it seems to me that Luck and Coffee is kind of cooperating after making public that the, the books are uh, cooked and that uh, there is some financial fraud. They launched an internal investigation and as far as I can see, they are complying with the inquiries by Nasdaq and the SEC. So um, I'm currently not worried that at this point in time, Luck and Coffee may get a immediate investigation and also a delisting. What I think rather happened is that um, the current halt of the trading is possibly connected to the internal investigation that is going on in Luck and Coffee. So maybe Luck and Coffee even triggered the halt uh, that can range up to 10 days until they want to you know, finish the in internal investigation because obviously their stock has been smashed down and um, with a huge effect, huge ripple effects that we've been seeing. And that goes actually uh, back to another story around the founders. So the trading hall possibly has got something to do around um, Lu Zhengyao, who is the co-founder of Luckin Coffee and also of Car Inc. and the CEO of Luckin Coffee, Tian Zhiya. Because what happened is that after the, the, the story broke around the fake um, accounting data um, that Luckin lost minus 80% and in the next trading day they lost another 20%. And that has a lot to do around what's happening with the finances, the personal finances of Liu Zhengyao. Because what he did is when Luck and Coffee IPO'd is he took also a loan that was secured actually with a margin of um, stock in Luck and Coffee. But not only his stock, but also of the stock that is owned by Tian Zhiya. So now that um, Luck and Coffee's stock is going down significantly, possibly Liu Zhengyao got a margin call and he couldn't um, you know, pay back the debt and now kind of, you know, um, defaulting on this margin loan. And, um, well, in order to um, secure the collateral of um, the debt uh, that has been given by big banks such as Goldman Sachs, the management team around Lu Zhengyao and, and Tian Zhiya, they had to turn their shares and give them to the banks who did, well, basically just uh, went onto the markets and sold off the shares into the markets. So this possibly led to the minus 20% uh, because those shares been all been dumped on the markets and maybe not even all of them yet. But maybe this has also triggered the fact that, you know, um, those banks are losing money, Lu Zhengyao is losing money and uh, Tian Zhiya, she's even losing voting rights in the company. So it's a disaster for all of the parties involved, actually. So they have been possibly forcing a halt in the, in the trading of the stock because for them it's all bad news. So that's my personal opinion, how I'm reading the things that are currently unfolding. And um, I could be wrong about that, but it's certainly interesting to see, um, you know, what is the role of all of those different parties involved. So now we have, uh, as I outlined here, the big banks and also um, the management team, is, which is affected heavily us as real retail investors sitting aside. Then there is the COO of Luckin Coffee, um, Liu Tian, who is currently not a big shareholder of the company, so he's not really impacted on the stock price. At the same time, well, currently it's only him uh, he uh, and, the, uh, and his team who should be responsible for all of this mess. And at the same time, there is this anonymous report and the short sellers out there who have been, you know, um, betting on the company uh, shares to decline. At the same time, maybe not all of them have now covered their positions. So maybe they also are affected on, on the, the current trading situation. So it's really, really a tense thriller that is going on on this. And at the same time, uh, we see that other uh, Chinese ADRs are affected massively. So for instance, I'm also invested in NEO and we saw that their stock price 
has tanked. Uh, there has been another, a couple of other companies trading uh, in the US who are Chinese companies who have, you know, other short seller reports being targeted at them. One of them, for instance, GTX Tech Education. Uh, so all of those companies are now affected by what's going on about Luckin Coffee. So this is really an interesting story to follow. And it can affect many, many things um, about uh, China and the US and what's going on in the stock markets. So meanwhile, while I don't have any new numbers that I can use in order to you know, see if I can make uh, an opinion whether uh, Luck and Coffee can survive this or not. So currently all I know is that um, Luck and Coffee reported more than 700 million US dollars uh, in cash in the banks. But this could be fraud or uh, not true as same as with the, uh, the sales numbers and also the expenses that have been inflated. We also need to consider that not only the sales numbers have been inflated, but also the expenses have been inflated. So we don't really know what's going on right now. And we really need to see the, the actual verified numbers in order to make sense if luck and coffee can actually survive the next couple of months uh, and well currently my situation or currently my perspective on things is that 700 million US dollars in cash in the banks should get them uh, a long way and possibly a, a, a long way enough in order to clear up everything and uh, we definitely know that there need to be some changes in the management in order to um, uh, clean things up however also, with all of the situation around the banks with Goldman Sachs, the short sellers, the management team and so on, and we still don't really know if it's only the COO involved or also uh, happened in consent with the CEO and uh, Lu Changyao. Uh, we don't know. It's, it's, a, it's a big puzzle. And we'll, currently, it's, it's really all speculation if we talk about this. And as I explained in my last videos, we saw a, a run to the Luckin Coffee um, coffee shops. And as I explained, we saw a spike in searches for Luckin Coffee online. And partly, of course, because there have been people um, worried about the discount codes, which they still have. So they want to still get a coffee. But also there has been a little bit of a nationalistic movement around Luckin Coffee. Um, that's people are saying, well, we support our national champions and uh, we don't care uh, if there has been financial fraud because all I want is a cheap and proper coffee and that's what I'm getting with Luckin Coffee. So uh, there is still a little bit of you know deeper digging that has to be done in order of how are the consumers really reacting to this whole crisis of Luckin Coffee right now. So one interesting thing that has just happened is that if we look at this, um, Ruizing Cafe, so Luckin Coffee in Chinese, has been uh, increasing their registered capital by more than 500 million US dollars. So I'm not a lawyer, but to me, when I read this, it could mean actually two things. Number one is that Luck and Coffee will possibly want to um, put some assurance to their third party suppliers, for instance, those people uh, where they are sourcing the coffee from and so on, in order to make sure that they will still uh, deal with Luck and Coffee on an operational basis normally. So, for instance, that they can still purchase the coffee because, you know, the operations are still ongoing. Because many people will, will now be possibly worried about um, the financial credibility of Luck and Coffee and so on. And they may just stop uh, sending them, for instance, the goods or stop um, uh, serving Luck and Coffee with their uh, third party services. And if you increase your registered capital, that means that parts of the money is actually restricted, cannot be used uh, in, for other things than actually paying, for instance, the third parties like suppliers and so on. So this should be some reassurance for the third parties. Another thing, at least in Germany, what we see if uh, there is a change in uh, registered capital is that there's actually new investors or lenders coming into the company. And now this could actually mean that, uh, well, um, Luck and Coffee is possibly behind the scenes um, either witnessing a buyout or some new investors or lenders coming into the company and adding some funds to the company here. And not only did Luck and Coffee increase their registered capital, they also changed the, the, the scope and the broadness of business. So I, I looked it up and uh, I saw that the, the range of, um, you know, the business activities that they can do which is quite limited and very strict in China so the, the business licenses are really really important in China you see them usually if you walk into the shop and you can't do any business aside of what is actually mentioned in your business uh, license 
And and the category has been extended massively. So first of all, it now includes also wholesale of goods, and the categories are much much broader um, than only cafe and and beverages right now. So now it also includes like dance champion, uh, so uh, electronic goods, or also Wei Sheng Yongping, uh, Wen Hua Yongping. Um, it also has here some accessories, uh, Zhong Biao like uh, watches, and and uh, and so on. Uh, and uh, and also Jia uh, Yong DNC, so um, uh, consumer goods that can be used uh, at a home and so on. So th this uh, it has been massively increased by um, uh, the amount of products or the, the category of products that Luckin Coffee is intending or allowed actually also to sell. And another really interesting thing is that I found is that uh, Luckin Coffee stores have been increasing even after the fraud has been published. So uh, there is this one study where, which is kind of Kind of um, looking at how many stores can be found in the Luckin Coffee app, and um, so now the the count is more than six thousand stores, and by, thereby overtaking uh, Starbucks, which has around four thousand stores in China, and you know this number has been even increasing. There has been a time, maybe during the Rona crisis, where uh, there hasn't been um, enough data around, or maybe the stores have been closed. But it clearly shows now that there has been more than six thousand stores, and this is actually the store count is something that even in the short seller report has not been um, questioned by uh, the author of the, the, um, the stores. And now why is this important? Because, you know, with the increase in registered capital in, of the, um, the, the broader scope of the business model and the increasing or the, the uh, continued growth story of um, number of stores um, growing uh, over time, this is very uh, substantial information for anybody who is possibly considering of buying uh, luck and coffee or um, increasing their share. So, so on who could this be? And actually in my beginning of my video, I said that I want to give you a little bit more context around this whole thing about Alibaba and Tencent. And uh, well, this is something which we are usually telling in our client presentation is that if you look at China, uh, you need to really be aware of the, the big fight that is going on between Alibaba and Tencent, who are the, the dominant players in the Chinese tech environment. So it's basically, we call it the Chinternet. So everything that's happening uh, beyond the great uh, firewall. Uh, so, uh, you know, where Google, Facebook and Instagram and so on, all of them are not allowed. So there's only Alibaba and Tencent as the big tech players. And they kind of divide the internet. So if you look at their services, for instance, in e-commerce, uh, Alibaba has Tmall and, uh, for instance, Xiaohongshu. And uh, they also have their own payment provider, which is Drifubao, like uh, Alipay. And on the other hand, there is um, Tencent, which is the owner and maker of WeChat, but they also have WeChat Pay as a payment provider and Tsingdong, which is their e-commerce uh, retail platform. So and if you are active in China um, and what involved in creating digital services, you will quickly realize that there is a big gap between those ecosystems. So if you are part of the Tencent network, you can, for instance, not access or share links in, in the uh, Alibaba platform ecosystem. And this has so much uh, influence in what's happening in the social media in, in China and also how companies and startups in China are being built and actually funded and also how they are operating. And Jack Ma and Alibaba have been the ones who have coined the term smart retail um, with their stores, uh, Huma, which are perfectly integrating offline and online services, which is something unseen in the West. And what I'm personally noticing is that, well, actually there's a, a shift in how consumers uh, in China are actually dealing with those ecosystems. So usually you have WeChat as the, the big super app wh where, which combines all of the services. So you can book hotels, you can uh, rent a bike, you can uh, chat with your social peers, you can you have kind of a social timeline uh, where you can share photos and so on. Um, and then at the same time in, in Alibaba ecosystem, um, people start more and more using Alipay uh, for as a second super app in order to, for instance, for ride hailing and for payment obviously but also for many other things which they can do in so-called mini apps that's maybe an, an enough topic for another deep look at uh, those kind of uh, ecosystems but my point is here that there is actually a fight going on between those two ecosystems and each of them want to increase their share in what's happening in those innovation and tech trends and now for Tencent it's that uh, they have previously 
uh, acquired a big stake in a company called Meituan. And Meituan is basically a food delivery service. And this is interesting now, they have a big uh, corporation going on with Luck and Coffee. And that's why I'm actually thinking that Meituan would be a really interesting player to look at if we think about who could be interested in taking out Luck and Coffee and maybe um, buy them. However, if you look at Meituan, it's still also a startup that has received some funding and I don't think that their funds are actually sufficient in order to uh, finance a takeover of Luck and Coffee. But at the same time, I think you guys should take a deeper look at Meituan, which is uh, really not well known in, in overseas. But uh, from my point of view, it's one of the major tech companies of China to watch. And I also bought some uh, shares in the company in order just to get a better feeling of what's going on with this company. So watch their introduction video here. Meituan Dianping is China's leading e-commerce platform for services. It's a platform that uses technology to connect consumers and merchants, meet people's daily needs for food, and eat even extends to border lifestyle and travel services. Its daily lifestyle services include on-demand delivery, in-store dining, hotel booking, movie ticketing, transportation, bike sharing, and car hailing to name a few. And now we'll show you how the whole thing works, starting first with a typical morning in Beijing. Out of the wide variety of Beijing breakfasts, Alice decides today to try out a new restaurant recommended by Mei Tuan. She pays for her food with a simple swipe of Mei Tuan's in-store QR code scanner and then gives the restaurant a five-star rating before she leaves. Alice then uses her cell phone to QR scan and rent a Mo bike, Mei Tuan Dianping's bike share service, so she can avoid warning traffic on her ride to work. Mr. Yen, a small business owner, can use the app in a different way, confirming an early morning delivery and taking inventory at his restaurant. He can host his e-menu and add today's special before any customers arrive. Delivery is a major aspect of Mei Tuan Dianping's services. Fei Fei is a delivery rider. Mei Tuan's AI and powered intelligent dispatch system pre selects the most suitable delivery rider to each customer, ensuring the food is delivered in the shortest time possible. Lunchtime is rush hour for Mei Tuan's delivery service. Alice sees it's noon, so she uses the delivery app to order an office lunch. Her order is sent to Mr. Yen, where he accepts and gets started cooking the meal. Fei Fei, the pre-selected delivery rider by system, is sent directions for pickup almost Hello, instantaneously. A hands-free smart earbud reads on the route and keeps him safe on his drive. There are tens of millions of these orders placed and completed throughout Mei Tuan's delivery every single day. Mei Tuan's AI-powered intelligent dispatch system can determine the optimum delivery route within milliseconds. Is the order being picked up? Mei Tuan Dianping is exploring new horizons with AI driving technology and Cloud Hub intelligence scheduling and autopiloted delivery cars that can accurately navigate between cityscapes to deliver meals. After a hard day at the office, Alice heads to Mei Tuan Dianping's Alice Supermarket, where everything in the store from fruit to imported beer can be scanned, purchased, and taken home. Food can even be ordered for home delivery within 30 minutes or sent to the office the next day. Alice can even pick out an imported Boston lobster and have it made fresh by in-house chefs. Once Mr. Yen closed for the night, he takes a look at the Mei Tuan's merchant app to access sales information, review revenue and see other metrics. He even explores financing and loan options as he considers opening up a second restaurant downtown. So as you can see, Mei Tuan is big in the area of food delivery and thereby obviously interested in what's happening with Luck and Coffee because you can order a Luck and Coffee either through the Luck and Coffee app but also through Mei Tuan. And um, they have been actually promoting this and have um, signed a partnership in order to uh, deepen their relationship in this regard. Regard. And, and what you can also see about Meituan is that they are trying to get into new service models and that being usually high frequency um, services. So that are services that you are using on a day to day basis where you actually the business model is more about the data of those services that you gather rather than ma making the money on the actual product that you sell. For instance, um, their engagement into the bike sharing business. And if you look at the latest um, interim report, um, the CEO actually uh, said that um, while we further narrow the operational losses of our new initiatives, we remain highly alert at the opportunities that correspond to our food and platform strategy, explore new areas with discipline and make investments based on our return on investment assessments. In grocery retail, especially fresh food retail, there is a large total addressable market with a relatively low online penetration. 
This market presents a great opportunity for expansions in the grocery retail business through both our self-operated and marketplace model. Does it ring a bell? I think it sounds very, very close to what Luckin Coffee is doing, particularly if you think about Luckin Coffee's strategy that I'm always saying about the unmanned retail strategy um, by building you know, even some vending machines uh, in, a, in a large scale and also by focusing on a data-driven business model rather than making the money on, on the, the the coffee transaction actually. So spinning this back to the other insight that I mentioned about the continued growth of the stores um, that have not been falsified by the um, shareholder, uh, by the short seller reports, I think this could be one big argument, for instance, in, in a company like uh, Meituan that might look into, um, you know, get together with Luckin Coffee and me maybe even taking them over because um, this is one asset that Luckin Coffee has demonstrated and continues down demonstrating to do that they are scaling very quickly and then that they can actually um, execute on this. So that might be one major asset in actually some uh, negotiations and talks that are currently going on. On the other hand, I said that Meituan is possibly not able to make such a big financial transaction. And I think um, it's thereby actually, even though there is um, on a strategic level or on a business model level, there, there are good um, arguments, uh, particularly if we also now see uh, at the broad and scope of uh, the business of Luckin Coffee that they also go into electronics and selling other goods. Uh, so they could, for instance, become the distributed um, little uh, local warehouses that can be accessed by, for instance, by the Meituan drivers and so on. And uh, Luckin Coffee could become, you know, the back end and the data warehouse and um, yeah, focus on uh, these uh, new retail stories. Um, but at the other hand, as I mentioned, you know, this is unlikely that a Luckin uh, Made one can actually afford this kind of a transaction. So I really think it's it's up to what Tencent uh, role is in, in all of this because they are the ones who are big invested in Meituan and they are the ones who are actually in the fight with Alibaba. So and if we look at Tencent, they are currently making the switch from just being an advertisement and games company towards a company that's focusing more on cloud services and IoT services. So, uh, and this uh, against the context that they are actually fighting Alibaba in, and I want to, uh, you know, gain some traction uh, in, in the fights of the super apps, uh, Meituan versus Alibaba, um, uh, Drivubao, um, Alipay, and so on. Uh, Luck and Coffee could become a puzzle piece in this bigger picture here. So, so I know this is all very speculative and um, you know just uh, trying to piece the puzzle pieces together here and but based on what I'm seeing about you know the situation of the, the luck and coffee founders currently um, the situation of the investors of the banks the financial pressure um, what's going on with uh, the competition in a broader context in China and obviously we don't know what's happening I don't know either and I'm, I'm definitely waiting for some verified news on uh, in terms of the financials of Luckin Coffee what's going on um, but I think it's certainly um, uh, worth considering what's currently possibly happening behind the stages and why I think Luckin Coffee that this story will continue to go on for a while and that um, it's currently just uh, too messy of a picture and too uncertain about who really did some, uh, you know, who's really responsible for the fraud and um, how 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 much it will really hurt Luck and Coffee in the long term. So um, I hope you find this interesting. And if you find this interesting, please give it a like and a thumbs up and also subscribe to our channel and also let me know in the comments what you personally think about it. And um, also if you now... Um, think that you will possibly hold on to your shares if you want to sell it or if you're maybe new to Luck and Coffee and you consider it then uh, considering buying it. Um, one, one major point around this in my personal opinion is still that the management uh, has to come clean in a way uh, no matter how all those you know bigger picture puzzle pieces uh, turn out in, in terms of the funding and also the big players that are finally you know um, kind of have to say in all of this. I still think um, and that's actually where Meituan could also come in as a savior uh, because the CEO of Meituan is actually one of the high re highly most regarded founders in China in general. So if he could possibly take a stake in Luck and Coffee, but you know, making a little moonshot here, uh, that could be very, very interesting uh, uh, thing to see. So um, yeah, but finally, as I said in my first video, once again, um, this is what I think personally needs to happen is that uh, the management needs to come clean. Uh, I hope the next week could possibly 
um, bring some more clarity if trading finally resumes, if we hopefully get some real uh, authentic numbers from Luck and Coffee. And until then, I hope you are fine uh, with your fam families despite the whole Rona situation and I uh, hope you stay healthy. Thank you guys for watching and see you next time with another update and I hope to make some videos on Neo and Tesla as well. Uh, I'm back in Berlin now, so that means I can also go to Gigafactory Berlin, hopefully once again, and give you an update on that. So stay tuned and see you in my next video and thanks for watching again. See you. Bye-bye.